Patch 10.2 is live, and with it came some huge changes, including massive reworks to rogues and demon hunters, while Disc Priests and Balanced Druids saw some pretty big quality of life improvements. And finally, every healer now getting a 90 second PvP trinket. But will all of this be enough to break the meta? Today, we will be breaking down everything and providing you guys with our predictions on the upcoming Solo Shuffle meta thanks to the help of our Rank 1 players and AWC champions. Before we start, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. Everything at SkillCap is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. Kicking things off, we've got our melee winners where outlaw rogues look like they'll be entering their redemption arc. Previously, outlaws would have to spec into grappling hook, blade flurry, and roll the bones. However, now these abilities are baseline, giving outlaws a ton more talent points to play with. This is especially powerful now after the rework, as they have gained talents like crack shot, which makes their between the eyes have no cooldown, and also dispatches the target for 75% of normal damage when used from stealth, which means it can be spammed during subterfuge and shadow dance, all while being buffed with precision shot, which increases the range of between the eyes and pistol shot by 10 yards. These changes are going to make outlaw rogues even more challenging to shake off, because their damage from range will increase significantly allowing them to perform a builder finisher rotation while being kited. Outlaw is also undergoing reworks on two of its abilities, Ghostly Strike and Killing Spree. Ghostly Strike is now a 1.5 minute cooldown off global ability, which increases all Outlaw Rogue's damage to the target by 15% up from 10%. The damage of this ability has also been buffed by 33%, which means you'll need to react quickly when this button is pressed by enemy Outlaws. As for Killing Spree, be prepared to see it a lot more often now that it's a combo point consuming finisher with a 66% damage buff. Additionally, it causes 100% of the damage taken during its effect to stagger over the next 8 seconds, making it a powerful offensive and defensive tool. Finally, their tier set is pretty solid, with their 2 giving them more overall damage and combo points, and the 4 set making Roll the Bones refresh a current effect for a longer duration. Because of all these buffs, Outlaw is moving on up from the B tier to the A tier. Next, Subtlety Rogues are also benefiting from their recent rework, as they have received new talents to make them tankier. Ephemeral Bond increases healing taken by 8%, and Exhilarating Execution, a finishing move that heals the rogue for 5% of the damage done, with overheals turning into a shield. For rogue mains, these talents are fantastic, as they will allow them to stay in the fight longer, rather than relying solely on their hit and run playstyle. Subtlety Rogues are also receiving 19% more damage on Eviscerate and a throwback talent to Legion, Gormaz Bite, which inflicts shadow damage and causes their next three finishing moves to cost no energy, as well as giving three combo points. And with the Rotten being changed to affect any ability that generates combo points, as well as Shadow Blades being changed to generate full combo points, meaning both will work with Gormaz Bite, we're probably going to see some insane combos from Sub Rogues this season. As for their set bonus, Subtlety Rogues don't seem too hard done by, as they will have a chance to echo on their finishers of Eviscerate, Rupture, or Black Powder for additional damage, as well as generate more combo points if you take the 4 set. This tier set could end up with some pretty cheesy kills if they proc it at the right time with a large Eviscerate. Unfortunately for Sub, they are receiving a nerf to Secret Technique, as it will no longer double dip from the Deeper Daggers, Veiled Touch, and Dark Brew bonuses, with only a 12% damage increase to counterbalance this. Additionally, Deepening Shadows is reducing Dance by 0.5 per combo, down from 0.7, which means they will have fewer Shadow Dances overall. In general though, the pros far outweigh the cons, so we're going to be placing Sub in the S tier, up from A. Next up we have Ferals, who are also moving up to the S tier from their previous A tier spot. Now honestly, we probably should have already had Feral in our S tier last time. And well, in patch 10.2, we're seeing Feral's single target damage being buffed through the new Saber Jaws talent, increasing their ferocious bite damage by 40 or 80% when they spend extra energy. Their new 2 set also synergizes incredibly well with the incredibly powerful Wild Attunement talent, and will allow them to have an almost permanent damage increase. This, in addition to the 4 set, which reduces the cooldown on Feral Frenzy and allows them to do even more damage with the 2 set buff, leaves Ferals firmly cemented in our S tier going into Season 3. Joining the S tier are Arms Warriors, who are moving up from the A tier due to receiving flat damage buffs across the board, as well as two new insane PvP talents. The first of these talents is Safeguard, which will make Intervene have 2 charges and reduce allies' damage taken by 20% for 5 seconds, at the cost of increasing Intervene's cooldown by 10 seconds. ARMS had this in the past, and it was pretty game-breaking back then. 
This time should be no different, as they will now be able to effectively peel casters as well as melee with Intervene. Arms are also receiving the Battlefield Commander talent, which has a ton of effects attached to it. Most importantly, Thunderous Roar increases all damage by 5%, and Intimidating Shout loses 15 seconds on its cooldown, disjointing it with the new 90 second healer trinkets. Finally, their tier set is looking strong with increased rend damage and having sudden death proc on rend ticks, as well as making sudden death do extra bleed damage and buff thunderclap when used. Moving on, we have Unholy Death Knights, who are returning to the S tier after their nerfs in Season 2, as they are receiving damage buffs on almost everything. Unholy Death Knights are also having their Unholy Assault rework to buff their damage by 20%, rather than the haste modifier it was before. They're also receiving a strong tier set that buffs the sustained damage of Apocalypse by spawning an additional Magus of the Dead. Although Unholy did receive a 30% nerf on Summon Gargoyle, this ability was very rarely seeing play in PvP regardless, so this won't affect the large majority of Death Knight players. Our final melee winner is the Havoc Demon Hunter, who in true Blizzard fashion are entering S tier after a rework. The rework has left Demon Hunter with a slightly shorter Chaos Nova cooldown, as the Unleashed Power talent was removed in exchange for a baseline reduction to the cooldown of Chaos Nova. They've had a buff to Darkness, making it a 75% chance to avoid all damage, giving them more team utility and survivability. The Hunt's damage has been increased by 22%, giving them more burst. And Fellblade now is a 0.5 second GCD, down from 1.5, allowing for more damage combos. All this in addition to a bunch of new talents with huge potential, such as Inertia, which gives a damage buff when pressing Fell Rush while empowered by Unbound Chaos. This talent already seems good on paper, as you receive Unbound Chaos every time you use Immolation Aura. However, when combined with a Fire Inside talent, Immolation Aura gains an additional charge and can be refunded, allowing the Demon Hunter to potentially have a huge amount of damage from RNG. Hello, Melee Ellie Shamans. Speaking of RNG, they also have another talent that has a chance to duplicate the damage they do every time a Chaos ability is used. This has crazy synergy with I-Beam due to it ticking multiple times. Oh, and to top it off, they can also have a 2 minute metamorphosis cooldown now, which is perfect for solo shuffles, as it's more than likely they'll get 2 uses of this powerful cooldown in each round. When it comes to Demon Hunter's drawbacks, look no further than their tier set though, as it doesn't synergize well with Immolation Aura at all. They've also lost the powerful Fodder to the Flame. But despite these nerfs, it's clear to see that Demon Hunters are back with a vengeance, and we expect to see them performing very well at the start of Season 3. Moving on, we have the melee losers of the patch, starting with Rhett Paladins. After receiving nearly no changes other than a 3% damage buff and a couple bug fixes, Rhett Paladins may fall behind the other melee who have buffed to infinity and beyond. Couple that with a lackluster tier set that only deals some small cleave damage and a tiny bit of extra burst from Divine Toll, and Rhett's are not looking to return to their absurd levels in Season 1 anytime soon. Our other melee loser is of course the Frost Death Knight, who Blizzard just does not seem to care about at all. Receiving zero changes, Frost is still looking to be a gimmick glass cannon melee that is based on one-shot setups, which doesn't really fit in a solo shuffle environment. With that being said, their tier set is good and allows them to set up chill streak without the need to stack enemy players, but it's simply not enough to turn the tide for this class, which will be moving down to C tier from B. With all our melee winners and losers covered, let's recap. In the S tier, we have Arms, Unholy, Feral, Sub, and Demon Hunter all moving up due to their damage buffs and defensive kit. In the A tier, we have Survival Hunters, who are staying the same, and although they're receiving an increase to Wildfire Bombs and a great tier set, this won't make up for the spec's high skill cap and squishiness, especially with Survival Tactics no longer removing damage over time abilities for all specs. Windwalkers are finding themselves in a similar situation, having received damage buffs for Rising Sun Kick, Fists of Fury, and Whirling Dragon Punch, yet they maintain their A tier ranking due to their vulnerability to melee, which there seems to be a lot of this season. Although receiving a rework, Assassination Rogues are also not budging from the A tier. While their damage will likely be increased, and they have even more energy than before, Assassination can find it hard to carry games in Solo Shuffle outside of dealing raw damage. Couple this with how much Assassination Rogue needs uptime, and you have a very vulnerable brawler compared to the other S tier melees. Clearly though, there's been a pretty significant shift in the melee meta this patch, and we predict that there will be a lot of contenders for that number one spot. Moving on to ranged, starting with the winners. We have Destruction Warlocks who are moving up to S tier from A. Although they've lost Madness of the Adj Akir, Chaos Bolt itself has directly been buffed. Previously, Destruction would have to cast two Chaos Bolts to make the second hit hard with Madness of Adj Akir, 
but with the removal of this talent, Chaos Bolt will be doing big damage whenever it's used, so every bolt will be impactful regardless of when it's cast. Destruction's 2 set is also strong, as it will be giving charges of Dimensional Rift, potentially allowing the Warlock to get those deadly Triple Rift windows multiple times in one shuffle. All Warlock specs are also receiving an armor buff to Demon Skin, something that's definitely a helping hand towards Destro holding its ground against all the S-tier melee. Our second ranged winner is the Demonology Warlock, who is taking a leap up to the S-tier from B. This is due to the previously mentioned buff to Demon Skin, alongside their damage profile being shifted to a more consistent one, making it easier to deal damage without overly relying on the actual Tyrant doing damage. Demonology has also had buffs to its Grimoire, Felguard, Dreadstalkers, and Vile Fiend, so when empowered, they will do even more damage than before. Better get your roots ready. As for their tier set, they have a chance to summon a Doom Fiend from a debuff applied from Demon Bolt. How good this is remains to be seen, but it's most likely going to be one of the least impactful ones. Now, there's no ranged losers and not many changes to any of the other casters, so here we'll briefly recap all the other ranged, starting with the S tier. First up, we have Augmentation of Ochre, who have recently received some noteworthy nerfs. They also have a pretty average tier set that may pigeonhole them into playing Prescience or not using it at all. Still though, we expect novelty of a dedicated support spec to keep Augmentation in the S tier. Next in the S tier, we have Elemental, who although are not receiving any huge changes, are getting a decent tier set that allows them to gain Elemental Blast stat bonuses after using Primordial Wave. Moving on, we have Marksmanship Hunter in the S tier, who are getting a tier set that's looking to be incredibly overpowered, as the two-piece increases rapid fire damage, while the four-piece gives them a chance to reset its cooldown and effectively doubles its damage. And with MM already being incredibly strong into cloth and leather targets, we won't be surprised if we see this tier set get nerfed before too long. In the A tier, we have Frost, Fire, and Arcane Mages, who have also received no changes. Frost is getting the short end of the stick here with a pretty lackluster tier set that tries to force you to play Glacial Spike, whereas Fire is getting a buff to Combustion and Critical Strike damage, along with Arcane receiving a spell damage increase and DPS buff on Arcane Missiles. Also in the A tier are Beast Mastery Hunters, who have received some quality of life changes through Barbed Shot lasting longer, and a slight damage increase on Kill Command through the Savagery Talent. Our final ranged in the A tier are Boomkins, Although they are losing 5% haste from Nature's Grace, they're gaining a small damage increase on their mastery, which should make up for it DPS-wise. Boomkins are also being blessed with a good tier set, buffing Wrath and Starfire, along with their 4 set buffing their Eclipse, and so they should be in a pretty good spot this season. Going down to the B tier, we have Affliction Warlocks, who, despite receiving a bunch of buffs, are still struggling from the same problem as always, being incredibly one-dimensional damage machines. Like Demonology and Destruction, they have also received the 90% armor increase on Demon Skin, as well as the new Jinx talent, giving some great quality of life, allowing curses to apply corruption and agony at the same time while costing one shard. Unfortunately for Affliction though, Rapid Contagion is being removed, and Unstable Affliction's AoE damage is being reduced, making them essentially just a worse Destruction Warlock. As for their tier set, it's also pretty average, only buffing Soul Rot and Malefic Rapture damage. The other B tier ranged are Shadow Priests, who received some minor damage buffs and a small change to Focused Will, making them reduce physical damage taken by 15% and magic by 5%, rather than a flat 10% for both. This is great for Shadow, as historically, their biggest counter are always melees with high uptime. Their tier set isn't too great though, as it revolves around Shadow Word Death, which, unless you're playing Death Speakers, might not be too useful at all. Moving on to the C tier, we once again have Devastation Evokers. Although Blizzard have shifted some of their one-shot damage and put it more into sustain, they're still incredibly squishy after their cooldowns have been used. This leads Devastation into the horrible position of just being a worse augmentation that's 10 times more vulnerable, giving almost zero reason for people to play the spec. But with that, we have our complete prediction of the ranged meta in Season 3. Keep in mind that tier sets will make or break some specs, but this is what we expect to develop in the coming weeks. With DPS covered, let's wrap things up with healers, starting with our biggest winners. First up, we have Disc Priest, who is skyrocketing all the way up from D tier up to S. This is because of their penance receiving a huge 50% healing and 32% damage buff, along with their power word shield being buffed by 10% giving the class some insane direct healing without having to try and heal with atonement. This, alongside the harsh discipline talent being redesigned to guarantee power word radiance, causes the next penance to fire two additional bolts, a buff that stacks twice will give disc access to very pumped penances. Unfortunately for discipline, their mana will still be an issue. 
and those Discipline Priests who love to heal with Atonement will feel a bit sad due to a rework to Schism. But from a pure healing standpoint, Disc is going to be the most powerful it's ever been this expansion. Discipline is also receiving a strong 2 set that will increase Penance damage even more, in addition to Smite damage and an increase to Atonement's duration. Although they are getting a poor 4 set based on Shadow Covenant which will probably not be taken, altogether Disc is looking incredibly strong as we head into the start of Season 3. Our other healer win of this patch are Restoration Shamans who are jumping up to A tier from B. This is due to buffs to the most important part of Arresto Shaman's toolkit, their instant healing, with Riptide, Unleash Life, and Healing Stream all being buffed. The Resto Shaman tier set is also going to help out with this as it also buffs Riptide's healing and will further help minimize the amount Resto Shamans have to cast. Despite this though, Shamans aren't quite making it to S tier as they still suffer in Solo Shuffle due to their healing profile and defensive cooldowns not being the best at handling high dampening. And they're also being hit with a strong mana nerf to Mana Spring, Mana Tide Totem, and Resurgence, making their reliance on hardcasted heals and deep dampening something that will likely oom um them quite quickly now. Moving on to the healer loser of the patch, we have just one, so get ready to pour one out for Holy Paladins, who are dropping down to the B tier. This is because they are going to lose out on their previous tier set that was carrying them very hard, which is being replaced with one that doesn't really do a lot since you generally opt to play Plea instead of Daybreak and Holy Reverberations isn't predicted to be a game-changing heal. This, along with mana nerfs to Blessing of Winter and Reclamation, coupled with Holy Shock receiving a mana increase, will make Paladins oom um a lot quicker. Holy Paladins are also receiving a nerf to their damage reductions, like Sacrifice being 20% instead of 30%, which means meaning to spend more mana on heals, plus Sanctified Plates being 40% less effective, making them have far less armor and stamina than before, resulting in, you guessed it, the need to heal even more whenever they take damage. This leaves us with our healer tier list, heading into the start of Season 3 looking like this. Despite a few noteworthy nerfs to Restoration Druids, particularly with the removal of Circle of Life and Death, which has been renamed to Liveliness and nerfed by 10%, Resto Druids might just remain in the S tier after getting the ability to have around 50% uptime on Tree of Life with a rework to the Scenarius Guidance talent. And although Grove Guardian itself was nerfed, the new 2 and 4 set bonuses will make it easier for Resto Druids to handle spread pressure without having to rely on keeping HOTS up on multiple people. Holy Priests remain in the A tier after seeing a 30% buff to Serenity, which just so happens to be the entire focus of the Holy Priest tier set this season, with the 2 set causing Serenity to apply Renew, and the 4 set giving Serenity a chance to not consume a charge when cast, in addition to the mana cost. While their tier set looks great and will likely carry Holy Priest healing this season, they were also hit with a bunch of small nerfs, most notably to the cooldown reduction of Symbols of Hope, and to Power Word Life which no longer increases heals on targets below 35% and costs 2.5% mana instead of 0.5. Fist Weavers also remain in our A tier after receiving a 10 yard range buff on Ancient Teachings. This is fantastic for Fist Weavers who get paired with casters as they will no longer get permanently outranged. And with the meta looking very melee and augmentation heavy, Fist Weavers are looking to be in a great spot. In the B tier, Preservation of Ochres, who although received buffs to Living Flame and Verdant Embrace, will still struggle due to their lack of damage mitigation buttons for their team, which is vital in Solo Shuffle. Finally, in the C tier, we have the Caster Mistweaver, who despite getting a multitude of buffs, as well as decent set bonus that just does flat healing, suffer the same fate as Preservation of Ochres with no damage mitigation buttons, and unlike a Fist Weaver, they cannot influence the outcome of a game with a lot of damage. Plus, pushing in for CC is far too risky given how easy it is for a Mist Weaver to get swapped to and punished if they position too aggressively. And with that, we have our predictions for the early Season 3 meta. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. So that's going to be all for our predictions on the Solo Shuffle tier list. Thanks for watching everyone, good luck with the start of Season 3, we'll see you back soon.